Jamaican upbringing. So there was discipline there, there's focus, we were centered, you know. We were, we were, you know, weaned into this Jamaican environment in our home that when we went outside the home, we were almost prepared to deal with anything because that's how we was raised. And I'm raised by a typical Jamaican woman, my grandmother. She, she raised us all. In fact, you could say the two women, two Jamaican women, to get, to get that upbringing, to get that nurture. Come on, man, you're dealing with a real soldier here. Trust me. So when you, when you, when, you know, upbringing to me is the nurturing, the cultural, instilling, you know, the truth of our background, the ancestors, the, the upbringing of our cultural, you know, environment in Jamaica because my grandparents, they're from the country. So we had the country upbringing. You understand? The country. So when you're dealing with the b-boying aspects of it and who I am, where I'm coming from, it all comes from the nurtured and, and the, you know, the, the true nurturing of my Jamaican upbringing. This is a country upbringing. And that's, I can't denounce. Can't denounce that. I come, uh, yeah, the b-boying days for me started in my yard. When I'm saying in my yard, it, everything comes from my yard, you know? Indoors, in my backyard, where I used to always sit down with my uncles with their big speaker boxes and break, yeah? So, coming back from the b-boying days, my b-boying culture, it, it all came from martial arts, from the black movement, you know, because my mother was part of the black movement, you know, my grandmother, she was active in the movement. Back in the days, you know, everybody was so active because we was going through an identity crisis. It was a time where, you know, we was going through a, a, a change, you know. So the b-boying days kind of structured me into this kind of pioneering first generation, you know, immigrant, like, you know, child of an immigrant. So, so to speak. So being raised in the b-boy culture now, again, it was something that was almost inevitable. It was there for me. It had to be done. Yeah, I, I've been blessed through the history of b-boy and where I'm coming from. I've met and worked with so much great people um, from as early as the 80s. Met Bambata. Um, you know, I met Cool Herc. Um, you know, EPMD. These people. You know, from from you know from the pioneering graffiti artists to the pioneering DJs so you're talking like Brim, Table Tea Kid, Bio, you know Crazy Legs, I met Ken Swift, Rocksteady Crew, I met TBB, Abby, you know. Uh, where I'm coming from now I was B-girl bubbles back in the 80s, B-girling on the floor ciphers, up rocking, windmills, things like that. I made one chapter for b Girl Bubbles. That's from the 80s, yeah? I've moved on to another stage because now I've grown up, you know? The b girling culture, it's still within me and I don't think it's gonna leave. I, I think it's just there, it's embedded. So here, I'm gonna have to step up my game because I can't be there competing with these young children no more. So the best way I'm gonna put it now is that I have to put my status on the canvas. Basically to say I was here, I pioneered, and I'm still around. But a chapter of me is now left, it's been put aside and buried. And this is where I'm coming to the closing, the closure now of B Girl Bubbles. That's finished. That's done, that's done. This is a new era now, it's heartbreaker. When I was in Rotterdam, yeah, oh no, when, uh, let me start off first yeah, by saying that I've always been creative in art. I love art, you know, I'm an artist. I just like art, any form of art, yeah. So one time I was with my friend Temper in his studios because he was going to launch his, um, his new artwork called Moves and he painted a picture in tribute to me, you know. 
So he invited me down to his studio and I was doing some bigger moves in his studio. And the soles of my trainers were black. And I scuffed his, um, his studio up with, his, um, with my foot marks, you know, I was doing the six step. And he said, yeah, look at my floor, man. Look what you've done to my floor. I said, oh, sorry, I was there trying to <laughs> wipe it off. He said, no, 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 don't wipe it off. But I want people to see that B-Girl Bubbles came in my studio and was doing some B-Boy moves. So he said, leave those prints there on the floor. And I said, you know what? I could go away, do this and do it in paint, you know, and sell the canvas. This is the idea of um, Art Breaker. And then when I was in, um, the, in Rotterdam, I was doing like a, a little tour in, in Rotterdam. People kept coming to me, oh, do your footwork, do your windmill, do your head spin, you know, do this move, do that move. And it's like these people don't realise, you know, I, I, I've been out of the game for almost 25 years, you understand? So I, again, I said, you know, the best thing I could do is put this on cameras and sell it, give it to them. If they want my moves, they can buy it. They can take it off me. That's the best way I could put it. So this is what Artbreaker is. It's a way to say I was here, yeah? And when I'm gone, when I'm dead and gone, the canvases will still be here. Whether in museums, whether in schools, on the streets. It's just to say, you know, be girl bubbles, she was here. This is her footwork, and this is the canvas. It's heartbreaker. Watching True Fab TV, subscribe now.